Hello pumpkin friends, it's Chad, it's August 10th, it is time for your update on what we got going on in the greenhouse and the surrounding areas. So I'm going to flip you around and walk over yonder way, I'll tell you about the, uh, the pumpkin patch and then the garden behind me, but you're not going to bother going over to the bush of gourds, but hang out for a second. So here we are at the end of the greenhouse. The 21, uh, or the 2005 is right there. You can see it. It's kind of funny. You can see the 2005, 2118, and uh, the other one's down there. So this is the, uh, the field pumpkin plants. These are the wolf pumpkins, our jack lantern pumpkins. we got a few big ones going. I'd say those are probably, you know, bigger than a basketball size. And I don't think I can show you on camera. But these are wolf pumpkins. These are like wolf field pumpkin kind of variety. Ow, fudger. And they are sharp as a mofo. So they have like really big stems. Pretty cool plant. If you guys don't know, my name is Chad. We grow giant pumpkins and other vegetables and we just kind of chronicle it for our friends and family and largely so I don't remember, you know, so I don't forget what I did year over. And as I try to improve, I, uh, I can remember. Our zucchinis are doing good. Watermelons are starting to take off. Uh, I'm, I am enjoying growing the watermelon plants. I'm going to do those again next year and try to do uh, do them earlier, try to do better with them in general. So before I get wet, our raised containers, uh, we have had more cucumbers than we know what to do with, I'm turning into a pickle. Uh, so these are all cucumbers, our watermelon plant that's growing on a trellis needs the pantyhose to hold up the melon, it's doing pretty good. We finally have a lot of melons going. So we have a crap ton of tomatoes um, and uh, cucumbers. I figured out that these are some, I found them. They're like a little green worm, uh, like an army worm, I believe. It was eating up the uh, Brussels sprouts and the uh, cabbages. They're just going crazy with those. My little jackby little pumpkins, or I should probably, I should probably pick these. So we got, you know, maybe a half dozen of those guys, and they're still growing. Hopefully these were pollinated, and I need to wrap these around up into the trellis tomorrow while it's warm outside. Uh, my pepper plants are doing really good this year. These are the brain strain peppers, and I should have a boatload of these guys. They're kind of a cool looking super hot pepper, and we got a whole bunch of those guys going. On this great looking plant jalapenos are doing real good i think these are my carolina reapers these aren't doing so hot no pun intended uh they're doing okay hopefully they'll start to go my uh, my understanding that where i'm at super hots are always going to be kind of late season this is uh these are like the trinidad scorpions so i got a handful of those going too and another little Jalapeno, so all in all, garden's going good. Onions are tiny, but we got to those late. Let's go check out the giant pumpkins, what everybody is here for. So here we are in the greenhouse. My helper back there. Oh, that looks like a good view to zoom in on. Nice. Pulling some weeds. Here is what Emily is calling molar. The, uh, the... Oh shoot, 1543, I don't even remember. My Urena plant that I've pulled out, half the plant to give me more walkway. The pumpkin was trying to pick itself. I cut off the main vine, it was kind of underneath the pumpkin itself. And it was uh, about ready to rip itself off, so I chopped off the back half of the main vine. And this thing, I mean, for what it is, that is a solid pumpkin. I, I you know, I always, I always question my slapping, but I guarantee you, that is a heavy pumpkin, like super heavy. I would say it's probably, I don't know, three, four hundred pounds, somewhere around that. Sure is ugly though, but it wants to live. We're going to let it live. Look at that butt. Holy moly. That divot out of that side. That is an ugly pumpkin. Woo. Boom. Uh, so we named this one. Max finally got around to naming it. It's called Miss Wanna. Uh, so, one of his favorite movies as of late is Moana. And uh, so this now, henceforth, shall be known as 
Miswana. He doesn't call it Moana. It's Miswana. Uh, it's looking really good. The plant itself is looking really good. I want to show you guys the difference between like a plant that's aging well versus not. Stem is looking pretty good on this one. And yeah. And the pumpkin. The pumpkin's like it's soft. It's not cantaloupe. Soft, supple. Like a baby's bottom. It's looking real good. So I'm going to wander over somewhere. I'm going to show you the difference between uh, you know, good old leaves and bad old leaves. Okay, so here is the plant on Miss Wana. And these are, this is the first secondary vine. And here is the stump. You know, big around. Bigger around than a beer can. And this plant, you know, is pretty good. These leaves are not crunchy. They're so soft. They're, you know, a little decoloration because they're old. But really, really good old leaves. Let's go on the other side. Okay, here we are on the 1542 Urena, I think. And we're looking at some really bad old leaves. So, you know, we were just at the main vine on the first, uh, the first secondary vine on Miss Wana and Molar. I mean, look at that leaf. This leaf is crap. And if I was smart, I would uh, take all these leaves off and get them out of my pumpkin patch because there's, you know, you just don't want that. Um, these leaves have a lot of bloat on them. I mean, and as we, you know, look at them, they're crunchy. They're just bloated. You can see them scabbing over. It's a, just a wild looking plant. And that's not bad. I mean, this happens to a lot of pumpkin plants. But I'm just impressed that this plant is not doing that. And, you know, opposite, we're on the front end of the of Miss Wana plant. And this plant is soft and green and it just is looking killer. I do have some tertiary vines growing a little wild in there, but such is life I can't get to them so go be the best vine you can be I remember that one because I was two pounds off the other one Emily guessed on that one two pounds off that one was about we're over 900 pounds we're less than a seven we're less than a thousand pounds it slowed down this week I don't remember how old it is one of these videos I'll remember to give you guys that information Less than a thousand pounds and it did slow down. Emily is pulling up some vines. Tell us about the weed situation there, sweetheart. Um, this is one bundle of reeds that we are uh, also harvesting. How's the tomato bushes? Or? The tomato bush is lacking in any tomatoes, but is proliferating wildly. She was pointing out the roots. If you guys don't know, see like right there. A tomato plant will grow roots anywhere. So if it's in contact or if it has uh, moisture and, um, you know, shade. Tomatoes. Why does it have no tomatoes, gardener? They're coming right here. Look, look, we're going to have, we're going to have, this would have had tomatoes. Yeah, except there's no flowers on anywhere else. Give it time. You're not doing a good job with tomatoes. Well, I shouldn't have let him take over as much as I did anyway. Yeah. A little bit excessive. Yeah, definitely, definitely excessive. But you have Thank you. Yeah, you should bail that and give it to the donkeys. She's feeding it to the donkeys. We're going green. Um, something that we did on Saturday or Sunday was I moved the pumpkins back. That was a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. Oh, speaking of bad plants, I've got a situation over here. Let me share with you. I have spider mites. See that? Spider mites. <coughs> if it wasn't for look at these guys, I went to use my sprayer and it was it was not uh, not in a living condition, so I've got to go get a new sprayer. But the leaves are not really that bad. But those spider mites have taken you know a little uh, a little virility out of these. Need to get rid of them. I need to start spraying anyway for uh, powdery mildew. Anywho, look at the back plant, back half of the 2005 haste anyway. It's a pretty good looking plant, doesn't look terrible. Uh, anyway, like we were talking, 
we use these uh, posts here. Uh, Ralph or Doug suggested that. We beat in these posts about two and a half foot down. I had my come along attached and we ratcheted the pumpkins back a little bit. It was a good thing and a bad thing. It was good for this pumpkin. So we have Miss Juana, we have Beanbag, and I'm going to name this one. I'm going with Bertha. I'm with Big Bertha. She just looks like a big pumpkin. It's my definitely my biggest looking pumpkin. It's pretty cool looking. Uh, so anyway, we got Big Bertha. Big Bertha, we cranked back. Let me show you. Um, watch the video that I uploaded on Saturday to see how I did that. <clears throat> so what we were doing was we were alleviating the stress on this main vine. So this was at like a 90 degree angle before, and now it's at uh, like a 30. Should be good. This pumpkin is, to me, it sounds, it sounds solid. It's a solid sounding pumpkin. Uh, this is my youngest pumpkin. It's in the day 40s, I think. And it's, uh, man, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to sandbag you. It's like 850 pounds or so. 850-ish. Looks real good. Solid looking, big ol' pumpkin. So I'm gonna put the sheet on, we'll go talk about uh, beanbag. Wait, real quick. Uh, Bertha. Bertha is an older looking girl. She's starting to cantaloupe on her. You can see. And it's kind of like, a, it's a little seepy. You can see on the sheet that it just has a little pumpkin juice coming out. Not a big deal. But it's an interesting difference between Bertha, who is, uh, you know, a little cantaloupey and seepy, versus Miss Juana, who is still soft and supple. Now let's go look at Beanbag. Here we are at Beanbag. Beanbag was doing good. Um, this one is 750-ish pounds. Really fell off pace, and I think I know why. Let me show you. Note we have a fan right there, and this is going to be kind of tricky. Let me turn off the fan. There we go. And I'm laying on my belly. So, get my finger in frame. Where's that? There we go. Here's the stem. It's like two inches long, and the main vine cracked. There we go. So you can see that probably a third of the main vine came off the stem. Thankfully, we didn't break the vine all the way off. And there's still a good chunk of the vine connected to the stem. But that's not ideal. We were cranking it back really good. And then, uh, and then just one too many cranks. It literally was on the last crank. And I'm sure everybody says that. But on the last crank, you know, just that top part went... So that sucked. That really took it off pace. We were doing 30 pounds a day, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't measure it the day of that happened and the days leading up. I just measure once a week. Next week we'll have a good benchmark on what that did to affect the growth. Um, so all in all, I mean, you know, that kind of sucks a lot. It doesn't even kind of suck. It does suck. But it had to be done, you know, the, the vine positioning on this plant was a challenge and has been from the beginning because of just how the pumpkin's growing. But had I not scooted it back, it would have popped itself off fully. So, you know, it just, it is what it is. Um, where do we stand? I think we have, we're in what, August? Today's August 10th, so 30 and then 20. So we have 50 days left roughly. 50 days left and if everybody's at 800 pounds you know the omnipresent goal is to get to 1333 pounds so you have 4,000 pounds of pumpkins between three pumpkins so that you get your gpc coat um and 800 pounds so i have what uh 500 pounds left i mean you know that's that's a very obtainable goal but at the same time it, it's also not because everything's everything's starting to you know show its cracks so you got some spider mites we got a broken vine you know that plant miss Juana's plant 
I didn't bury any vines. So are we going to have, you know, late season slowdowns on that? Hopefully, you know, in the past several weeks, we've been in the 30 pounds per day, all of them. Um, hopefully we get, you know, that goes to like 25 pounds per day, and then 15 pounds per day, and then 10 pounds per day, you know, gradually until we <clears throat> get to the finish line. Um, you know, Muller would be first if everything holds true. Muller would be the last weekend in September, first weekend in October, second weekend in October, third weekend in October. That's just because how I get to them. Um, so everything's looking, you know, pretty good. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, there's a lot of season left. And today is Tuesday. On Monday, <coughs> uh, I'm going to be gone. I'm leaving Monday morning. And I'm going to be gone for 11 days. So that's uh, that's concerning. I haven't been gone that long. And if I have a GPC coat kind of potentially within my grasps though this really hurts my chances because this could go to 10 pounds and you know i'd be lucky to get to what i don't know a thousand pounds on that one um so i don't know that really that really hurt but i mean irregardless it's doing good it's been a good season i've learned a lot next year only three pumpkins i'm gonna be steadfast in that three three better pumpkin plants and whatnot all that jazz so that's it for this week guys if you've made it this far appreciate you holding through uh make sure you subscribe to the channel subscribe to all the other pumpkin grower video youtube pages that are out there there's lots of good ones uh you know stupid tomato plants <laughs> should have pulled them all out and that's it let me go cover up this bright orange it's like neon orange this thing is so cool uh, pumpkin appreciate you watching guys have a good one we'll see you next week well that's a lie maybe i'll do a video on sunday we'll see you next sunday before i go out of town for work bye